Now that we've had a proper introduction to them, I want to go over the Exylvanians a little bit. The official antagonist of the series, and boasting one of the coolest troop designs in my opinion, Exylvania was here even in the early days of the series' conception. However, they weren't always vampiric Germans. In a recent interview with the series' creative director, Tancred Dyke Wells, Wells talks about how before Battalion Wars, before Advanced Wars Under Fire, the series went by a completely different name. That of course being Versus. Well stated, Versus as I originally conceived it was set in its own universe. The scenario was more of a humanity versus undead ghosts of war situation. Basically all the soldiers and victims of war were rising up from the grave to avenge themselves on living humanity. So it was more of an anti-war game. The Western Frontier was originally going to take up its role as humanity's army with designs similar but still a bit different from the current designs. But Exylvania would be the Army of the Dead, with a vastly different design to its troops. And I must say, these original designs are what I live for. They are so creative and cool looking that I hope that maybe one day we can see them in a future game. Versus was eventually scrapped and Exylvania and its troops began to look more like the Battalion Wars counterparts with Under Fire and then finally their current designs used today. Today's episode is brought to you by Sand! It's everywhere! Get used to it! Hey everybody, TBG Hunter here, and welcome back to more Battalion Wars Revisited. Last time, we started off the Dune Sea campaign by defending Fort Omaha in Beachhead. We did a pretty good job at it, although that 1% really is kind of rubbing me the wrong way because we were just so close from an S rank. Anyways, it's time for us to go help the Tundra and Territories in Invasion Force. They are in quite a situation, so let's go see if we can pull them out of the fire. Our brave Tundra and allies still hold the city of Dusty Springs, but overflowing Exylvanian forces are rolling in to crush them. Work together to prevent and to capture the comm station, the distress signal must be maintained if we are to guide the Tundra and Evat choppers to safety. The Dune Sea campaign is moving fast, Commander. Even as we speak, the Exylvanians are laying siege to the Tundra held city of Dusty Springs. Brigadier Betty, can our frontier allies assist us in resisting the invaders until we are ready to evacuate? We must hold the Exylvanian Siege Brigade at bay until our distress signal is received by Tundra High Command. We'll be glad to assist, Marshal. There is a Frontier Battalion in the area. I'm sending it to you right now. Commander, your mission is to protect the comm station until Marshal Nova's evac wing arrives. Make for the Silver Star. All right, before we head off, let's get an overview of the situation. So, we got two, three, squad, four squads of Tundrans all over the place. We got ones right here, 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 and here. We got the Exylvanians attacking from this side right now. We got Grunts, we got Bazooka Vets, we've got the Artillery, which I always thought was just like a really weird design for Artillery uh, for them because it just looks like it was be such a pain to like drive and shoot. But also one thing I always wanted to know because I actually didn't realize uh, this until I uh, did a practice run at this level. That's all the way over here. For whatever reason, there's just a couple of Exylvanian Grunts just chilling out here in the mountains. I never understood it. Alright, come on. Gotta push through fast, boys. This is definitely a just direct your troops to attack and then just uh, let them just go ham on whatever Axelvanes are in their path. And while they take care of the troops over there, I'm gonna take care of the artillery battery over here. Go. All right, just gotta finish off this uh, rocket bed, as the Exylvanians call them. And now let's get a battalion over there, because it looks like this rifle gun squad's already engaging the Tundrans, so we gotta go help them out. Keeping the Tundrans alive counts towards technique, so you want to do your best to try and keep them alive as much as possible. Although the fact that I do see a couple of dead Tundran grunts means that I'm not doing a very good job at it. 
had scanchets to run these inferior specimens into the ground. The veins of an entire continent are waiting to be tapped. Kaiser Vlad, we meet at last. There you are. But you chose the wrong day to pick a fight with our allies. There's one, and I know second one, there it is. I always love just how, like, visceral some of the grunts, like, attack lines are, instead of just, like, open fire or anything like that. He just shouts waste them. Bring in heavy tanks and rocket troops to seize the northern bridges. Commander, you gotta stop the Exylvanian Siege Brigade from entering the city. Head for that Silver Star. Alright, let's put our anti-air vehicle right here. Let's put you guys right here for now. Actually, we'll put you over here. Alright. Now, let's just open fire on these heavy tanks real quick. Take them out with ease because our heavy tanks are more than a match for them. Deploy gunships to support my rocket troops immediately! Those stockpiles of hero's height are within my grasp! Uh, let's pull you back just a little bit more. And here come the gunships, but thankfully, because we got the anti-air vehicles on duty over there, they make easy pickings out of those gunships. Alright, guys, you might want to torch them. Alright, not bad. Not bad at all, guys. I'm proud to serve alongside all of you. Again, the inferior enemy frustrates my efforts. I need infantry to secure that comms station. And where are my gunships? I love how, as this level get uh, progresses, you just hear Vlad just get more and more agitated by the fact that we're doing good against uh, his troops. And just how desperate he is to just capture the city. Alright. Well, sounds like the anti airs already got the gunships in their sights. I just heard one go down, and here comes another one. And there he goes. Didn't even get a chance to even fire for a salvo of rockets. Now we're just gonna sit pretty right here, because here comes the rifle grunts coming this way. I could go out there onto the bridge and, like, uh, chase him down, but I don't want the tank to accidentally get caught. Because once we're done with this, we're going to need to make a beeline for the comm station. So, what I think I'm going to do is line up a shot like this. And we're just going to start pelting him from a distance, give him a little bit of an artillery brush. I got one. Ooh, got a three for for that one. All right, come on, boys, time to go. Close the iron fist of Exylvania around them. Transport copters surround the comm station with infantry. Take another five minutes before Tundran High Command received Nova's distress signal. Retreat to the comm station. Excellent! You kept the Tundran infantry at both locations in one piece. Both secondary objectives complete. Oh god, we're so far back. Oh boy, here it goes. Alright, so... Something to note, uh during my challenge run of this. It seems like during the Goon Sea campaign, uh, the most common thing that your grunts want throughout this, as I've heard it at verbatim, time and time again, really, time and time again, is the fact that the Woods of Frontiers grunts really want ice cream while out here in the desert. I mean, I, I get it, you know, keeping cool in a heat wave is very important, but still, it's ridiculous of just how many times I have heard them say that they want ice cream so badly. There you are. Now, if you're 
If your anti-air vehicles aren't uh, up to snuff against the uh, gunships that are going to periodically attack, don't worry. The uh, Tundrans actually have a squad of missile vets protecting the comm station. All right, we'll keep that transport right there, or that anti-air vehicle right there, so we can take care of any transports. We'll keep this one right here. Ooh! All right, there we go. And we'll swap over to the bazooka vets because I think that's. Ooh! Yep, there it is. All right, Nova, where's the next transport coming in? Oh, gotta wait for the gunship to get taken out, and then I think the transport's gonna come in. Or it could be another heavy tank. Another of the Kaiser's T contests. The trajectory will carry it south of the comm state. Thankfully, it's not going to get anywhere near close to landing, uh, given where we strategically put our anti-air vehicle. Yeah, this basically just has ultimate defense at this point. Uh-oh. But maybe I should also keep Bazooka Vets on high alert on this side, so they don't have to worry about getting uh, surrounded or surprised by the heavy tanks. So, how you enjoying the desert, boys? I really feel bad for the Tundrans uh, for this campaign, just because they are definitely not dressed for this kind of weather. The Frontier, for the most part, I could see them wearing it. Like, okay, it's light fatigue sort of grunts, but the veterans all have, like, sh uh, short sleeve shirts on top of their armor. Let's call you back here a little bit. You are definitely going to get too far out. But, like, the Tundrans, like, they wear their heavy winter coats, and they wear their, like, heavy... Uh-oh. Okay. Definitely going after the... Yep, there it is. Damn it. Kaiser is sending in every unit he can muster. Oh, he's already called in those reinforcements. All right, well, let's take control of our grunt. Since I stupidly let my anti-air vehicle over here get uh, completely eviscerated by that heavy tank. Oh boy! Come on, there we go. Alright boys, patch him if you got him. Oh, jeez. And that's why I didn't want that thing to be out too far. Alright, just a few more seconds and then we'll be golden. And in fact, for this, I'm going to take control of our anti-air vehicle. Trust me on this, you will want to. Tundra High Command has received our distress. The evac wing is inbound. Alright, oh, boys, come on. We got to get a move on. It's about to get very chaotic very fast. Commander. I want you to regroup at the lighthouse and hold out until Nova's extraction choppers arrive. Head for the gold star. So, as you can see, they're already beginning their major push in inland. We got some grunts coming in, we got the heavy tanks, we got gunships flying up ahead, and even more gunships flying in. It's going to get very chaotic very fast. Especially seeing as how there's a couple of transports flying in to drop off reinforcements right outside the evac zone. You know, it's not really a sneak attack if you shout that it's a sneak attack. 
Then it's just attack. Now our main goal here is not only just to hold out, but we gotta keep all the Tundrans alive. Or at least one Tundran alive uh, throughout this. So if you are done like me and get a good chunk of your anti-air capabilities taken care of, then uh, you're gonna be in for quite a fight. Cause you can't also rely entirely on the Tundrans missile vets to protect you. In fact, you could have some really terrible luck and have the missile vets get taken out on their run over to the evac zone. Really? Come on, it's right there. How do you miss something that big? At last, my evac wing has arrived. Thank you, Brigadier. Without you, all of my brave comrades would have been lost. But now, thanks to me, only most of them have been lost. I told you before, Marshal Nova. You can call me Betty. You are safe for now. But soon you will learn that there's no escape from my righteous entrance, my fleeing tundra foes. So, uh, hey, Nova. Uh, a couple of those transports are for us, right? I mean, you don't expect us to fight our way out of the entire city again, right? Ah, well, once again, another 94, and of course, technique was just the thing that knocked, it knocked us off one point, mind you, from getting that S rank. I'm starting to notice a repeating pattern throughout this campaign. Hmm. Ah, well. Anyways, folks, that is gonna do it. Next time on Battalion Wars Revisited, we're gonna get introduced to the heavy tank. With a crew of three, speed of two, weapons three, and armor rating of four. Its role is anti-armor, anti-infantry, and but it is vulnerable to rockets. Equipped with a new twin barrel cannon and two anti-personal heavy machine guns, the Herman M1A5 main battle tank, or Hermanator, packs a mighty punch like the Mark V, however. This unit can still fall prey to enemy RPGs, despite its uh, ceramic laminate armor. And as you can see... Uh, there's the campaign 2 bonus. If you've seen the past playthrough of this or seen me play through this game anytime, you know the fear that goes down my spine anytime I see this bonus mission. But thankfully for now, we don't have to worry about it. Next time on Battalion Wars Revisited, we're going to continue on to the Dune Sea and actually start our chance to take the fight to Exylvania with Gunships of the Desert, one of my personal favorite missions in the game. See you guys next time. Later.